Previously on Hamlet, the series. Young Fortune Bros, holding a weak supposal of our worth, or thinking by our late dear brother's death our state to be disjoint and out of frame. I am the spirit of thy father. One scene tonight comes near the circumstance that I have told you of my father's death. I pray you, when thou seest that act afoot, even with the very comment of thy soul, observe mine uncle. If his occulted guilt do not itself unkennel in one speech, then it is a damned ghost that we have seen, and my imaginations are as foul as Vulcan's stippy. This is one Lucianus, nephew to the king. You are good as a corpse, my lady. I could interpret between you and your love if I could see the puppets dallying. Keen, my lady, keen. Cost you a groaning to take off my edge. Here a sword which was declining upon the milky head of Reverend Priam seems in the air to stick. Poison's in the garden for his estate. His name's Gonzago. The story is extant and writ in choice Italian. You shall see anon how he gets the love of Gonzago's wife. Stands it safe with us to let her madness range. Therefore, prepare you. I, your commission, will forthwith dispatch, and she to England shall along with you. The terms of our estate may not endure, has it so dangerous as to hourly grow out of these lunacies. We will ourselves provide. Most holy and religious fear it is to keep those many, many bodies safe that live and feed upon your majesty. Hmm. Arm you. I pray you, to this speedy voyage. For we will fetters put upon this fear that now goes too free-footed. We... We will haste us. <laughs> uh, my lord, she is going to her mother's closet. Uh, behind the arras, uh, I'll convey myself to hear the process and, and uh, warrant. She'll tax her home, and as you said, and wisely was it said, uh, tis meet that some more audience than our mother, since nature makes them partial, uh, should all hear the speech Advantage! <laughs> Fare you well, my liege. I'll call upon you ere you go to bed and tell you what I know. <laughs> Thanks, my lord. straight. Look you, lay home to her. Tell her that her pranks have been too broad to bear with, and that your grace hath screened and stored between much heat and her. I warrant you. I'll ensconce me even here. Pray, you be round with her? Not withdraw. I hear her coming. Now, mother, what's the matter? Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. Mother, you have my father much offended. Come, come, you answer with an idle tongue. Go, go, you question with a wicked tongue. Oh, how now, Hamlet? What's the matter now? Have you forgot me? Oh, by the rude, not so. You are the queen, your husband's brother 
father's wife. And would it were not so, you are my mother. Nay, then I'll set those to you that can speak. Come, come, sit you down. You shall not budge. You go not till I set you up a glass where you may see the inmost part of you. I, what wouldst thou do? Thou wilt not murder me. Help! Help! Ho! What? Ho! Ho! Help! How now? A rat? Dead! For a ducat, dead! <laughs> Thou done? May I know not? Is it the king? Oh, what a rash and bloody deed is this? A bloody deed! Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. Kill a king? Aye, lady, twas my word. Thou wretched, rash, and true fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Take thy fortune. Thou finds to be too busy in some danger. Leave wringing of your hands. Peace, sit you down and let me wring your heart, for so I shall, if it be made of penetrable stuff, if damned custom have not brasted so that it is proof and bulwark against sense. What have I done that thou darest wake thy tongue in noise to move against me? Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty, calls virtue hypocrite, plucks the rose from the fair forehead of an innocent love and sits a blister there, makes marriage vows as false as dicers' oaths. I mean, what act that roars so loud and thunders in the index? Look you, upon this picture, and on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on this brow? Hyperion's curls, the front of Jove himself, an eye like Mars to threaten and command, a station like the herald Mercury, new lighted on a heaven-kissing hill, a combination and a form indeed, where every god did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man, this was your husband. Look you know what follows here is your husband. Have you eyes? Could you on this fair mountain leave to feed and batten on this moor? Ha <laughs> ha! Have you eyes? You, you cannot call it love. For in your age the heyday and the blood is tame. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? Sense sure you have, else you could not have motion. But sure that sense is apoplexed, for madness would not err, nor sense to ecstasy was ne'er so thrall, but it reserved some quantity of choice to serve in such a difference. What devil wast that thus had cozened you at hoodman blind? Eyes without feeling, feeling without sight, ears without hands or eyes, smelling, sands all, or but a sickly part of one true sense could not so mope. Oh, shame, where is oh. thy blush? Rebellious hell. If thou canst mutin in a matron's bones, to flaming youth let virtue be as wax and melt in her own fire. Proclaim no shame, while the compulsive ardor gives the charge, since frost itself as actively doth burn, and reason panders will. Oh, Alex, speak no more. Thou hast turned my eyes into my very soul, and there I see such black and gray spots as will not leave it empty. Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of an ensemed bed, Stewed in corruption, honeying, and making love oh, over a nasty sty. no more. These words like daggers into a my ears. A murderer and a Hamlet. villain. A slave that is not twentieth part the tide of your preceding lord. A vice of kings, a cut purse of the empire, and the rule that from a oh. shelf the precious diadem stole. And a put in no, a no. a king of shreds and patches. Save me and hover o'er me with your wings, your heavenly guards. What would your gracious figure? Alas, she's mad. Do you not come here, tardy girl, to chide? That lapsed in time and passion lets go by the important acting of your dread command. No say! Do not forget, this visitation is but to whet thy almost blunted purpose. But look, amazement on thy mother sits. Oh, step between her and her fighting soul. Conceit in weakness body's strongest works. Speak to her, Hamlet. How is it with you, lady? Alas, how is it with you? That you do bend your eye on vacancy and with the incorporal air to hold discourse. Oh, 
gentle daughter, upon the heat and flame of thy distemper, sprinkle cold patience. Where under you look? On him. On him. Look how pale he glares. His cause and form conjoined preaching to stones would make them capable. Do not look upon me. Lest with this piteous action you convert my stern effects, then what I have to do will want true color, tears perchance for blood. To whom do you speak this? Do you see nothing there? No, nothing at all, yet all that is, I see. Nor did you nothing hear? No, nothing but ourselves. Why, look you, look how it steals away. My father in his habit as he lived, look where he goes even now out at the portal. This is the very coinage of your brain. It's bodiless creation. Ecstasy is very cunning. <laughs> Ecstasy! My pulse as yours doth temperately keep time and makes as healthful music. It is not madness that I have uttered. Put me to the test, and I the manner will reword which madness would gamble from. Mother, for love of grace, lay not that matter an unction to your soul, that not your trespass, but my madness speaks. It will but skim and film the ulcerous place, whilst rank corruption mining all within infects unseen. Confess yourself to heaven, repent what's past, avoid what's to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Forgive me, Miss my virtue, for in the fatness of these percy times, virtue itself of vice must pardon beg. Yet curb and woe for leave to do him good. Oh, Emma, thou hast cleft my heart in twain. Oh, throw away the worser part of it, and live the purer with the other half. Good night. Go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. That monster custom, who all sense doth eat of habit's devil, is angel yet in this that to use of actions fair and good he likewise gives a frock or livery that aptly is put on, refrain tonight, and that will lend a kind of easiness to the next abstinence, the next more easy, for use almost can change the stamp of nature. Once more, good night. And when you are desirous to be blessed, I'll blessing beg of you. For the same Lord I do repent, but heaven hath pleased it so to punish me with this and this with me, that I must be their scourge and minister. I will bestow him, and will answer well the death I gave him. So again, good night. I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus bad begins and worse remains behind. One word more, good lady. What shall I do? Not this, by no means, that I bid you do. Let the bloat king tempt you again to bed. Pinch wanton on your cheek, call you his mouse, and let him for a pair of reachy kisses, or paddling in your neck with his damned fingers, make you to ravel all this matter out, that I essentially am not in madness, but mad in craft. Be thou assured, if words be made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe what thou hast said to me. I must to England. You know that. Oh, Jack, I had forgot. It is so concluded on. There's letters sealed. And my two schoolmates, whom I will trust as I will adders fang, they bear the mandate. They must sweep my way and marshal me to knavery. For tis the sport to have the engineer hoist with his own petard, and it shall go hard. But I will delve one yard below their lines and below them at the moon. This man shall set me packing. I'll lug the guts into the neighbor room. Mother, good night. Indeed, this counselor is most still, most secret, and most grave. That was in life a foolish, prating me. Come, sir, to draw toward an end with you. Good night, mother. What's this matter in these sighs? These profound heaves. 
You must translate. Tis fit we know them. Where's your daughter, Gertrude? Bestow this place on us a while. How is Hamlet? Mad as the sea and wind when both contend which is the mightier. In her lawless fit, behind the arras, hearing something stir, whips out her blade and cries, A rat! A rat! As in this rainish apprehension, kills the unseen good old man. Oh, heavy indeed. It had been so with us had we been there. Her liberty is full of threats to all, to you, yourself, to us, to everyone. But alas, how shall this bloody deed be answered? It will be laid to us, whose providence should have kept short, restrained, and out of haunt this mad young maid. But so much with our love, we would not understand what was most fit. But, like the owner of a foul disease, to keep it from divulging, let it feed even on the pith of life. Where is she gone? To draw apart the body she has killed, or whom her very madness, like some ore among a mineral of metal space, shows itself pure, she weeps for what is done. Oh, Gertrude, come away. The sun no sooner shall the mountains touch than we shall ship her hence. And this vile deed you must see for soon. With all our majesty and skill, both countenance and excuse. Ho! Oh, Guildenstern! Friends both, go join you with some further aid. Hamlet in madness hath Polonius slain. And from her mother's closet hath she dragged him. I pray you, seek her out. Speak fair, and bring the body into the chapel. I pray you, make haste in this. Gertrude, come away. We'll call up our wisest friends and let them know both what we mean to do and what's untimely done. Come away. My soul is full of discord and dismay. Whereto tis king. Tell us where it is, that we may take it thence and bear it to the chapel. <laughs> Do not believe it. Believe what? That I can keep your counsel and not mine own. Besides, to be demanded of a sponge? What replication should be made by the daughter of a king? Take you me for a sponge, my lady? Aye, ma'am, that soaks up the king's countenance, his award. His authorities. But such officers do the king best service in the end. He keeps them like an ape in the corner of his jaw, first mouth to be last swallowed. When he needs what you have gleaned, it is but squeezing, and sponge, you shall be dry again. I understand you not, my lady. I am glad of it. A knavish speech sleeps in a foolish ear. My lady, you must tell us where the body is, and go with us to the king. The body is with the king, but the king is not with the body. The king is a thing. A thing, my lady? Of nothing. Bring me to him, hide fox, and all after. I have said to seek her and to find the body. How dangerous is it this woman goes loose? Yet must not we put the strong law on her. 
She's love to the distracted multitude, who like not in their judgment, but their eyes. And where tis so, the offender scourges way, but never the offense. To bear all smooth and even this sudden sending her away must seem deliberate pause. Diseases desperate grown by desperate appliance are relieved, or not at all. How now? What hath befallen? Where the dead body is bestowed, my lord, we cannot get from her. But where is she? Without, my lord, guarded to know your pleasure. Bring her before us. Ho! Gildenstern, bring in my lady. Now, Hamlet, where is Polonius? At supper. At supper? Where? Not where he eats, but where he is eaten. A certain convocation of politic worms are you, madam. Your worm is your only emperor for diet. We fat all creatures else to fat ourselves, and we fat ourselves for maggots. Your fat king and your lean beggar are but two dishes, but to one table. That's the end. Alas. Alas! A man may fish with a worm that hath eat of a king, and eat of the fish that hath fed of that worm. What dost thou mean by this? Nothing. Except to show you how a king can draw progress through the guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? In heaven. Send hither to see. If your messenger find him not there, seek him in the other place yourself. But indeed, if you find him not within this month, you shall nose him as you go up the stairs into the lobby. Oh, seek him there. He will stay till ye come. Hamlet, this deed for thine especial safety, which we do tender, as we dearly grieve for that which thou hast done, must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore, prepare you. The bark is ready. The wind that helped the associates tend, and everything is bent for England. For England! I am it. Good. So is it if thou knewest our purposes. I see a cherub that sees them. But come, for England. Farewell, dear mother. Thy loving father, Hamlet. My mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so my mother. But come, for England. Follow her at foot. Tempt her with speed aboard. Delay it not. I'll have her hence tonight. Away, for everything is sealed and done that else leans on the affair. Pray you, make haste. And England, if my love thou holdest at aught, for my great power thereof may give thee pause, as yet thy cicatrice is raw and red after the Danish sword. And thy free awe pays homage to us. Thou mayest not coldly set our sovereign process, which imports in full the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England. For like the hectic in my blood she rages, and thou must cure me. Till I know tis done, howe'er my haps, my joys were ne'er begun. Go, Captain. For me, greet the Danish king. Tell him that by his license, Fortinbras craves the conveyance of a promised march over his kingdom. You know the rendezvous. If his majesty would aught with us, we shall express our duty in his eye, and let him know so. I will do it, my lady. Go softly on. Whose powers are these, sir? They are of no way, ma'am. How purpose, sir? I pray you. Against some part of Poland. Who commands them, sir? The niece to old Norway, Fortinbras. Goes it against the main of Poland, sir? Or for some frontier? 
truly to speak, and with no addition, we go to gain a little patch of ground that hath in it no profit but the name, to pay five ducats, five, I would not farm it. Nor will it yield to Norway or the Pole a ranker rate should it be sold in fee. Well, then the Polak never will defend it. Yes, it is already garrisoned. Two thousand souls and twenty thousand ducats will not debate the question of this straw. I humbly thank you, sir. God be with you, ma'am. How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a woman if her chief good and market of her time be but to sleep and feed a beast no more? Sure, he that made us with such large discourse, looking before and after, gave us not that capability and godlike reason to fust in us unused. Now, whether it be bestial oblivion, or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event, a thought which, quartered, hath but one part wisdom, and ever three parts coward. I do not know why yet I live to say this things to do, sith I have cause, and will, and strength, and means to do it. And as gross as earth exhort me. Witness this army of such mass and charge, led by a delicate and tender princess, whose spirit with divine ambition puffed, makes mouths at the invisible event, exposing what is mortal and unsure to all that fortune, death, and danger dare, even for an eggshell. Lately, to be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw when honor's at stake. How stand I then? Would have a father killed, a mother stained, excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all sleep. <laughs> well, to my shame, I see the imminent death of ten thousand men that, for some fantasy trick of fame, go to their graves like beds, fight for a plot whereon the numbers cannot try the cause, which is not tomb enough or continent to hide the slain. Oh, from this time forth, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. Starting over in a new town Might as well choose a different name Cause your clothes, your job, your grocery store Even you are not the same Next time on Hamlet the series. I hope we will be well. We must be patient. But how can I choose this for a week? To think they, they should lie in, in the, the cold ground. ground. My brother shall know of it. And so, so I thank you for your good counsel. Come, my coach. Good night, ladies. Good night. Sweet, ladies. Good night. Good night.